Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be covering pivot points in Blender. There's five different pivot points right here and you can see them all. Active element, medium point, individual origins, 3D cursor, and bounding box. I'm going to be covering every single one of them and what the difference is between them. Okay, so let's just start out with the default one. And the default one is medium point. And this, it just takes the origin of every single object that you have selected. So I'm just going to select this one, holding shift, select that one and this one. And it takes the origin of all of these and places a the 3D manipulator widget right in the middle. So it averages all the 3D space and then just places it right there. So I can rotate it like this and you can see that it's uh, following this point. We'll cover a little bit more in a little bit, but now I want to talk about the active element. What this does, whatever active element you have, that is gonna be your pivot point. So right now, I selected the camera last, and you can see that it's a different color. It's a little bit of a yellow oranges color, and these are more of a darker orange, and we can see that this, the 3D manipulator widget, is right there on this origin point. So I can rotate it, and you can see that it's rotating around the camera. If I hold shift and select this one, now this is going to be the, the object that everything rotates around. There you can see it. So that can be useful at times. I don't really use that one that often. Most of the time I use medium point or the, some of these down here and I'll show you what these are. So now I'm gonna go over to here and let's talk about a bounding box. What bounding box does is it draws a box, of a, like a invisible box around your meshes that you have selected then places the origin point in the middle of that box. So right now I created this box and it's set to wireframe down here. And I'll just turn this to wire. That's a cool thing that you can do. You can go solid wireframe. If let's say you have a really big scene, this is quite handy. You can go bounds and it will just display the wireframe. Okay, anyways, right now you can see the origin point is right there. So let me select all of these and go to bounding box and we can see our pivot point is right there. Now if I right click on this, uh, cube that I have you can see that it's the exact s same spot. It's right there It's the exact same spot. So what bounding box does it just draws a Virtual box and then places the pivot point in the middle it includes the mesh data So it's you can see that the mesh data is over here, and it's right there uh, If we go back to active element, it's not taking the mesh data into consideration It's only taking the origin points into consideration. So let me go back to this layer and select these and I'll show you the differences. So it's on bounding or it's on medium point right now. So if I switch it to bounding box, you can see it moves just slightly. I'm gonna go back to medium point and bounding box. So now we're gonna talk about individual origins. This one is really useful for a lot of things. So I'm gonna select all of these and then come down here and change this to individual origins. Now, if I was to rotate this, they will all rotate by themselves. So if I press R, you can see that the individual origins is a pivot point for all of these objects. I can also double tap R and move them like this. So that's really, really handy, especially for like architecture and you wanna do indents on certain things. I'll show you an example right here. So this object is from the clock tower tutorial I did a couple months ago. Link is down in the description if you wanna go check that out. So I'm gonna zoom in right here and go into edit mode. So if we come in here and if I select it by holding alt and right click, we can select the entire loop. And if I press I twice, it will do just the faces. So let's say I go somewhere around there. And then I say to myself, I want this to be smaller. So I can come down here and make sure it's on individual origins. And if I press scale, we can see that it's scaling every individual face just like that. If this is set to a medium point and I try to scale down, you can see that it goes inside of itself. And I don't want that. I want them to just uh, scale the faces down. So I can do that by hitting S and then just scaling the faces down just like that. So that is very, very useful. So now let's talk about the 3D cursor pivot point. So if we click this, our pivot point is now on that cursor. So if I click over here, we can see that the, the little widget tool has moved over there, same thing there, just like that. It follows the 3D cursor. So this can be really useful. Let's say I place my cursor on the bottom of this uh, cube and I go into front view by pressing number one and I scale it's going to scale up and on that 3d cursor So it's not going down at all. It's just going up just like that So that is really useful for a lot of things. I'll show you another cool thing that you can do with this So let's say I have a circle right here and I want to rotate this around the circle Let's say I want to do like an animation or something like that So I'm gonna press shift C to snap my cursor to the center of uh, the, the, the 3d space 
Now, if I make sure this is set to 3D cursor and I press R, it'll rotate around the circle just like that. This could be really cool if you want to create like an animation or something like that, just rotating around. It would mess up a little bit since the origin is right there. So another cool thing that you could do is press Control Shift Alt C, hit origin to 3D cursor. Now it doesn't matter if this is set to 3D cursor or medium point or bounding box. Let's just go with uh, medium point and if I rotate it'll rotate around since the origin is in the middle of our uh, of our circle hit I location rotation let's go to frame like 50 rotate this all the way around here then hit I location rotation hit the backspace and if we play this you can see that it's following the circle just like that let's try that one more time there we go the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is the shortcuts to switch between these two. So let's just start out with the 3D cursor. To switch between that one, uh, it is the period key on your keyboard, and you can see that it is now the 3D cursor. To switch to the bounding box, you can hit the comma key, and now you can see it's the comma. Now let's talk about the median point. If I go control and period, it'll switch to, actually that's individual origins. If I go control comma, that will switch to the median point. And then the last one, the active element, that is alt and period, and that will switch to the active element. So those are the shortcuts to switch between the two of them. That does it for this video. Thank you for watching, and make sure to check out that clock tower tutorial down in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.